Hi, I'm Irving. Let's talk about Irwin. I'll sure be glad to get back to camp. I'm hungry. So am I. But not for these. Baked, boiled, or fried, they're still roots. Suddenly, the big concern isn't the taste of the roots, it's the ability to get back to camp, eat them, and complain about the taste. But this kid isn't concerned about little people. He has bigger things on his mind. I'll find you, boy. I'll teach you to try and steal from me. You're gonna catch it, boy. I know you're here someplace. Bigger things like that guy who's three times his size. We don't know what the boy did, but no way can Barry allow some dumpy looking hick to beat up Ron Howard. Except he was still going by Ronnie Howard at the time. As if it matters. The guy has been a living legend since he was like six years old. He can call himself Irving J. Frumpelmeyer if he wants to, and I will quietly get out of his way. You've got to help him. Keep your head down. You're going to catch it, boy. Hey, Giant! Over here! No, here I am! Up there, giant, over here! Come back, Barry! Over here, giant! Our giant there is played by Jacques Aubuchon. He was a character actor who showed up all over the place, often playing guys like this. We've seen him three times on this channel before. For those who remember the late lamented Hogenheim, in which I was reviewing Hogan's heroes until a certain network whose letters appropriately end in BS stuck a giant shaft at my where I wasn't looking and made me take it all down, but I'm not bitter. He played German General von Kattenhorn in the episode The Battle for Stalag 13. In the F Troop episode Yellow Bird, you know, the one featuring Julie Newmar, most of us may have been a little too focused on Yellow Bird to notice our man here playing Gideon T. Jeffries. And finally, we saw him in an episode of The Green Hornet playing a guy named Tubbs. Most of those characters were fairly secondary and didn't stand out that much. We'll definitely remember this guy. Get on, Giants! Giants! Here! Right over there! They get him running in circles for a while until he gets tired, gives up on everything, including the boy, and leaves. Well, you'll get yours. I promise you. Sure as my name's Zerpin. I don't give up easy. Remember that. I know it looks like I'm giving up, but I'm just taking a, uh, I'm taking an extended rest to gather my energy, but I ain't giving up. No siree. Sure as my name is... What was my name again? Zerpin. I know I'll get you just as sure as I know my parents hated me. I went to court once to change my name, but they threw me out when I couldn't spell Bob. Little people? Are you there? If you're there, please don't be afraid of me. I hope you're all right. We're all right. I understand Fitzhugh's paranoia, Lord knows they're all entitled to a little, but we've seen before that Barry has a kind of instinct about these people sometimes, and Chipper doesn't seem especially upset, so the kid is probably okay. Frankly, I trust my dog's opinion of people a lot further than I trust my own. If you take a leave of your senses, he said he wouldn't hurt us. You know you can't believe giants. You heard the giant serpent tell you about Kobik's award. Don't forget, boy. We saved your life. I won't forget. Thank you, sir. He doesn't care about any reward or any of that. He's fascinated to meet them and thoroughly grateful for their help. So what did he steal from that guy and why? I didn't. I just happened to walk onto his property by mistake. You see, he has no fences and I was out looking for a small animal to use in my experiment. Small animal. Don't get any ideas, kid. I've been working on the formula to accelerate protein synthesis through increment amplification for almost two years. Protein synthesis? Increment amplifications? Well, that's ridiculous. You can't even know the meaning of words like that. A boy your age can't possibly know the meaning of words that I can scarcely pronounce. Well, it really only means that I've discovered a substance that will make things grow much larger than they are. 
Oh, uh, boy. With Fitzhugh in the picture, it's not hard to see where this is going. Well, I am only 12, sir. But I'm not just a boy. I'm a genius. This is my third year at the university. They say I'm the present highest authority on biochemistry and biophysics. But being a genius in university at 12 isn't all it's cracked up to be. He was more or less literally torn away from his parents and dragged here to study at the university. He has no friends his own age and lives by himself in a room in the basement of the university science building. Sometimes I wish I could just play. But I don't know any boys my age. Yeah, what's being done to him is a crime. His childhood stolen from him, shoved off into a cage like he's the experimental animal. They treat him like a computer and not a person. But a big part of our whole purpose in this show is to show the horrors of a totalitarian, i.e. lousy, dirty, commie form of government. Because a capitalist society would never exploit people like that. Now they both have a tender spot for this kid. Fitzhugh introduces them. I'm Joe Dar. They call me Jody. Now, Jody, what's all this nonsense about making little animals big by feeding him this magic formula? It's not magic, Mr. Fitzhugh. He has some with him. He hands Fitzhugh a piece so he can examine it. I think we can all guess what happens next. <laughs> <laughs> Chipper, come back! All right, I didn't see that coming. But it's okay, Chipper will come back. Well, well, just look at who's here. <laughs> They're going to have a fun time getting him back in the ship. Ultimately, Jody runs away and the man basically studies Chipper and decides he has a dog now. Barry is inconsolable, but Fitzhugh says, look on the bright side. He doesn't have to worry about getting stepped on by giants or eaten by a monstrous cat. He's safe in their world. Barry, you go on ahead. I'll be back shortly. But, but where are you going? I, I want to come with you. Maybe we'll see Tripper. Well, you better get back to camp. Oh, dear, I'll be worried. It'll be dark soon. Chipper is a giant dog now. Might as well get used to it. Now I think we know what's coming. <laughs> Thanks for not disappointing us, Fitzhugh. And there's one thing he didn't think of before he did that. It was a pretty good trick if it put Barry into that state. Considering his level of distress, maybe you guys should take it more seriously. I don't believe it. You better believe it. <laughs> now they're taking it seriously. I'm a giant in a giant land. Isn't it wonderful? No, it's terrible. Are you trying to make it easy for Inspector Kovic to find you? He's not looking for me. He's looking for you. Kobik looks for little people. <laughs> he says, just imagine. Real food, real beds to sleep in, no more running and hiding. Jody has enough for all of you. Jody, the giants may not be that easy. There's more to it than just being the same size. <laughs> yeah, I could just see you crashing giant society in those clothes. Where'd you dig them up, Fitzhugh? I had very little choice. When I started to grow, I ran for the first place I saw, which happened to be a farmhouse. There was no one home. So I borrowed the best thing I could find. I think we can all guess whose house it was and where he was at the time. Fitzhugh forgot that his clothes wouldn't grow with him, so he found himself doing a Tommy Pickles. Oh, how can you be mad? That's because you're, um, uh, standing there all naked. Your uh, shirt pocket's ripped. Yes. I heard the farmer coming, so I had to grab the first shirt I could lay my hands on. Little matter. I have a more suitable wardrobe very soon. He's right about that, but not the way he thinks. Is there an antidote? I don't know. You don't know? 
of all the stupid. Mr. Wilson, I don't ever take this kind of talk from you. Mark won't let up and Fitzhugh finally says, I'm done with all of you. Don't ever expect any help from me, as if they ever did, and storms off. Before anyone can stop him, Barry runs after him. He just wants to say goodbye, so Steve says, let him go. As Barry follows him, Fitzhugh reaches the town and begins to blend in with giant society. That's right. He's essentially going to introduce himself as the town bully. Sandler? None. Fitzhugh must have taken Barry with him. They probably went right into town. Shouldn't we go look? Yeah, but not you girls. We better stay here. Why? It's no more dangerous in town for us than for you. Yeah, but somebody should be here in case we miss Barry and he comes back. If it seems like Steve's misogynism is in retrograde, once again we're dealing with things that were filmed in one order and aired in another. Now, if you're doing a sitcom like F Troop or even My Mother the Car, shows that have no real continuity, you can get away with that. In this show, we're developing characters. Contrary to what they're trying to tell us, that sort of thing happens in a fairly linear fashion, most commonly moving forward. Then again, these are TV executives, so it's possible they don't know that. Mind you, watch where you're going. Sorry. Sorry? You don't have to say after nearly knocking me over. But you have it wrong. You bumped into me. What did you say? Now, just a minute, my good man. I'm sure we can settle this peaceably. I ask you what you said. I have no desire to fight with you, sir. No, Mr. Fitzhugh. We saw that policeman. He and another officer will intervene before this gets out of hand. If you wish to prefer charges, sir. No, I, I just want to go home. I, well, this fellow's a maniac. Go ahead. Fine thing. People aren't even safe on the streets anymore. What are you doing? You heard him say he wouldn't prefer charges. You were giving him the same treatment you gave that kid yesterday when he accidentally hit you with his baseball. I don't know what you're talking about. Jody wasn't the only kid that Zerpin attacked. And in the case they're talking about, not only did he keep their baseball, which has a very special autograph on it, but he hit one of the kids with the bat. The boy is in the hospital in critical condition. The clothes Fitzhugh was wearing fit the description given by the other boy, and Fitzhugh looks an awful lot like him. Ten minutes as a giant, and he already got himself arrested for attempted murder. If Barry was an octopus, he wouldn't have enough hands to facepalm sufficiently. Mainly because... Octopuses don't have hands. I assure you, I don't know what you mean. I What's your name? It's Alec. I don't remember. Fitzhugh did something sensible. It's possible Kobik has their names, and if he learns that this guy is a former little people, he might do anything necessary to get him to give up the others. Pretend amnesia, and maybe they'll write him off as just some nutcase. This is little people money. Where did you get this? Maybe this isn't an ordinary police case. Take him to the special investigation department. And maybe not. Why in the name of chronic greed did he keep that? He had to know he couldn't do anything with it. Worse, it's all nice big denominations of the type one might have stolen from somewhere. He'll start claiming he found it on the street. Which street? He can't remember. Barry! Mr. Fitzhugh's been arrested. They found his money and took him into Inspector Kobik's office. Then they took him to city jail, but I don't know if Inspector... Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. Fitzhugh's where? In the city jail. City jail? Come on. Barry won't mention that none of it would have happened if Fitzhugh hadn't decided to start attacking random people to prove he wasn't afraid of giants anymore. Out of respect for Barry, I won't either. That's him, sir. I know him anywhere. Why, you fiendish little liar! What are you trying to do to me? I never laid eyes on you in my life. I thought you couldn't remember anything. See? He got mad like that when the ball accidentally hit him. The kid is adamant. This is the man who hit his friend and kept their ball. I tried to get it away from him, like I told you. I grabbed a hold of him. I saw him real close up, I'm sure. Did you know your friend hit his head on the rock and was badly injured? No. All I was thinking then was to get the ball back. It's worth a lot with the slugger's autograph on it. It's worth a lot, so you were out there playing ordinary baseball with it. Why? Did you? Did you? Captain Burton, Mark, bless you, my little friends. You've got to get me out of here. 
A, how, and B, why. You dump them in favor of this life of luxury as a giant. Mark will stay to watch in case they move Fitzhugh, while Steve will go to Jody's place and see if he has an antidote. Funny thing, Fitzhugh isn't all that crazy about being a giant anymore. Barry will stay with Mark, and Dan will head back to camp and get Fitzhugh's clothes, because nobody wants to see that. Your formula. Do you have an antidote? No, I don't. Why? Well, Mr. Fitzhugh found some of it and ate it. Now he's giant-sized. And it does work on people. Is he with you? No, he's in jail. And that's why we need an antidote. That got his attention. We have to keep in mind that this kid, for all his brain power, is 12. The idea of unintended consequences isn't part of his understanding of the world yet. When you're a kid, you just want to know if you can do it. You don't think about what happens next. I knew a kid who wanted to see if he could make a small bomb by stuffing gunpowder into an old CO2 cartridge. By the time he was done, we called him Three Finger Pete. I hope I don't have to explain why. Can you make one? Well, the reversal process would follow the same order. Each step negating the preceding one. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure I could do it. Right away, tonight? If I have the necessary chemicals here. But it will take time. Doesn't everything? If it takes three and a half seconds, it took time. Oh, he means... I'm sorry, I scared you, Barry. Captain! Mr. Wilson! What is it? Steve. By the way, Steve did have one other request for Jody. Thanks to his suit Jody was able to borrow from one of his professors, Steve is now Fitzhugh's lawyer. Jody gave me the name of a well-known attorney from his hometown. Well, how are you going to talk them into releasing him? On what grounds? On medical grounds. Tell Fitzhugh to expect me. They get introductions out of the way, and we learn that Kobik has friends in Elac, the town Jody is from and Steve is pretending to be from. That could be a problem, so Steve has to tread carefully. Kobik shows him the tiny money and explains that the mystery man had it in his pocket, but conveniently can't remember where he got it. Well, that's possible. Um, recently, he's been suffering under severe mental strain and he even lapses into occasional amnesia. And I'm sure when this accusation is cleared up and he's out of jail that uh, he'll be all right. He's very lucky to have a prominent attorney as a friend. Otherwise, I'd have to hold him. Looks like the bluff worked. Let's go get this poor man out of that cell. Oh, uh, Mr. Regal, I haven't been able to get over to Elox lately. Tell me, how is my old friend Judge Modoc? It's a trap question, Steve. As I said, tread carefully. Oh, he's, uh, he's fine. He is? Well, at least he was when he tried a case of mine last week. I have a standing joke. When someone tells me something that doesn't have enough information, I'll often say, too specific, be more vague. But when I'm saying it to Steve right now, I mean it. If you don't know the answer to a question like that, you say, I didn't realize he was your friend, tell me more, and throw the ball back into his court. Nobody ever explained that to Captain Burton. When he gets back to Earth, he needs to talk to somebody about the company's continuing education system. Who are you? Well, my name's Revo. I've seen you somewhere. Or a picture. I don't understand, Inspector. What's this all about? I just spoke long distance to the real Mr. Revo, to Judge Modak. Seems the judge hasn't tried a case in three months. Thing is, something is tickling the back of Kobik's mind. It can't be possible, but he has to know. Needless to say, Mr. Lawyer isn't getting out of that cell anytime soon. We heard what he said. Dan already took off to get the antidote and your clothes from Jody. That's good, because Kobik is confirming his suspicions. <laughs> It's not possible, but it's true. The next question is, what does he intend to do? Whatever his plan, now it's a race. Dan and the antidote against Kobik and his car. Open it! Open it! Looks like Dan wins, but they're not done yet. They're still chipper to think about, which is why Fitzhugh is carrying a piece of the antidote. But they have another mission as well. First we visit the farmhouse. We've got those giant clothes. We're gonna what? It's 
Inspector Kobig thinks that Fitz, you almost killed that boy. And if we get caught again, I don't want to have to have him answer for a crime that he didn't commit. They already know Zerpin is the real culprit. The task is to find some proof and get the right authorities to see it. As they approach the house, we see Zerpin take the dog and go for a walk. Good timing. And they know just what to look for. Now, Steve, if we can find that baseball that guy took from those kids, we'd have some real proof. Yeah, that's my hope. Well, if the guy didn't throw it away. Oh, no, not with old Slugger's autograph on it. Inside, they find the ball on a table. Dan and Steve are on the table. Mark is down below steadying the rope. Fitzhugh is keeping watch in a hole in the wall. And Barry is hiding in a gopher hole outside. Unfortunately for all of them, Zerpin just got back and he's relaxing on the sofa with a drink and his new dog. Okay, if we can get a good look at it, we might even find out what Old Slugger's name is. It says Old Slugger. If his parents gave him a name like that, he had to know he'd either become a baseball player or a boxer. Little people. There he goes. Chipper is not helping his former owners. He's barking at the two on the table, but apparently that drink Zerpin had was strong enough that he can't see them. That's enough to convince him that they've all gone outside, so as quick as he goes after them, Dan and Steve can make their escape. You know, I'd like to be kind and blame the alcohol for his addled brain, but I'm not sure this guy needs alcohol to be addled brain. Come here, you dumb dog! Dog, let them go for be It's little people we want! Case in point, it won't occur to him that maybe the little people took shelter in the gopher hole, which is exactly what they did. Chipper will keep trying to tell him, and he'll keep missing the message. Not that anybody six inches tall is complaining. Now listen, lad. I want you to run as fast as you can to Jody's. Tell him to call the police, and let him come right here. What about you? It's all right. Don't you worry. Run along, boy. Smart, Fitzhugh. He won't get a chance to tell the others he did that because they're hiding in the gopher hole and Chipper is determined to dig his way down to them. Hey, you dumb dog. And our towering intellectual still doesn't grasp the implications of it. Then, for the second time in as many minutes, it's Fitzhugh to the rescue. Get your butt. Here, Chipper. Here, dog. Here, dog. We watch Fitzhugh's face as he watches Chipper shrink back to normal size. The most amazing thing about Jody's invention is any dosage produces exactly the right size change, so it doesn't matter how much you eat. Come here, boy. And I do believe Fitzhugh is weeping. You can't blame him. He explains the mission he sent Barry on just as the police arrive. Now. Slugger's autograph. Take him to the car. When they showed him the shirt with the torn pocket, he admitted it was his. That plus the ball will be enough to lock him up for a long time. Kobik knows the little people helped him catch a serious criminal. He'll wander around the grounds and try to catch them anyway, because that's gratitude Kobik style. Watch where you're going, boy. I'm sorry, sir. Tell me, have you seen any little people around here? Little people, sir? Never mind. And that is true genius Jody style. Don't say a whole lot, just look slightly incredulous and say, little people, sir? Because when you say it like that, it just sounds silly. 
As quick as Kovic is gone, he gathers his new friends up and carries them to safety. Please forgive me. I learned my lesson. Life as a little person is full of problem giants. When you're their size, it's full of giant problems. You can say that again. You want to bet? <laughs> I won't take the bet, but I would like to hear him try. It was all sort of my fault. No. But you know, it is a big responsibility being so intelligent. I found that out. Well, I guess I won't be seeing you anymore. I'm leaving for the Institute of Advanced Study next week. So, uh, goodbye. He learned the Spider-Man principle, with great power comes great responsibility. He also learned the scientist's ethical dilemma, just because I can doesn't mean I should. For a few brief moments, he had some friends who didn't expect anything out of him, and they were the reason he was able to learn those things. He won't see them again, but he'll never forget them. And who knows? Maybe at this new place, he'll find a friend or two who just appreciate him for who he is and not for what they can squeeze out of his head. At least now he knows such things are possible, and they've given him hope that it can happen again. Hi, I'm Am. <coughs> All right, <coughs> great start there. Yeah, because that's gratitude, Coben style, Coben, Kobeck. Get his name right.